a lot of fun. And I'm super stoked because um, when Paxton and I were first talking, he's like, oh, I really see you on the Boom channel because it's all about mental health and music. And I was like, oh my gosh, my program, like what I take through people through yeah. it, to live a conscious sober lifestyle is I call it regrooving. We're regrooving your <laughs> mind, we're regrooving your spirit, we're regrooving everything. I love it, love it. And it was so based in the fact that like we wanna have fun while we're doing these things, mm -hmm. right? Like mental health can be such a heavy topic and can like, oh my gosh, and you know, focusing on the diagnosis yeah. and focusing on the pathologizing yeah. of everything. And everything that I've created is trauma informed. And therefore I do not focus on the diagnosis or the pathology of it. I really stay away from labels as much as possible. And I, I took myself through this journey first before I started really sharing it with other people because I knew that it was going to take an integrative approach to really learn to integrate all of the parts of you that have that you've maybe coped with substances or coped with sugar or you've coped with sex or gambling or anything outside of you just even with social media we can do it right like anytime you've coped with things outside of you you fragment a piece of your you there you want to bring back to you. And so what I offer to support people through is to really have an integrative experience so that when you choose consciousness, you're having fun and you're healing from that root cause that was there way before you started using something to escape yourself. So, uh, I mean, this, I can go on and on and on about like, no, you go on and on and on. <laughs> no, you in like, no, because yeah. see, let me, let me, I tell you this much and you go ahead and pick up for where, where, where you were, but I just, I need you to be able to be the first person that comes on here and starts this conversation because I'm, I'm looking at it. that There's somebody out there, a young person, a young adult with no support, no direction, no mom, no dad. And they're in this life uh, of addiction uh, or looking outside of themselves or looking to escape. And they don't understand how to walk back from that or run away from that. I, I love what you're talking about right now. So go right ahead. Keep going. Yeah, yeah of time. absolutely. Yeah. I think that something that's really important that you just said is that, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't a young person when I started on this journey, although in, correct, my, correct. in, in my twenties, you know, I was already starting to really choose these escape mechanisms as my favorite coping mechanisms. And, you know, right. I got, they, they saved my life for a really long time because they helped okay. me cope with um, all of the things that were happening in my life, right? They helped me cope with my, de my depression. Correct. They helped me cope with all these different right. things. But what, right, you right, know, right. something that I think is really important that people hear today is that there is not one single path to recover right. from anything. And I okay. was being led down a path that did not resonate with me. And, okay. and my nervous system was, was not on board with that path. Although, I okay, was before, not... before you, before you go any further, I'm just curious to ask, mm -hmm. what was that path? Just in case somebody is kind of going down that same way and they're thinking like you did, it just wasn't resonating with the nervous system. What was the path? If I may ask, what was that path? Yeah, for sure. So, um, when I first started on the path, this is, I'll tell you a quick little story about me, right? Okay. So I, right. when I was about 36 years old, I met um, a healer that I had in my life. And we really started to go down the path of really discovering my gifts and bringing those to life. And when, when I started working with him, I went really deep and was doing all kinds of like shamanistic work and really working, working, working on myself. And I, what I discovered is like, you know, I told the person like, until I heal my trauma, I'm not going to be able to really, I'm not yeah. going to be able to really bring move forward gifts yeah. to life. Right. So um, right, right. when I was 36, I created a plan. I made a whole list of everything that I was going to heal by the time I was 40. And I went on this path of like, all right, I, I got this. I'm going to go, you know, find my birth mom. I'm going to go, you know, talk to all of my exes and really explain to them like what was happening in my life and like make amends there. And I was basically going on this like journey to try to heal because I, I knew that if I could heal it, then I'd be okay. Well, right. I also went on this journey without a, without the proper toolkit 
or the proper support. And if you're out there listening, I cannot tell you enough that any kind of recovery journey that you go on, it is absolutely imperative to have a support team. Absolutely imperative. Like our the way that we're designed as humans, we will not walk into the darkness. Our nervous system, so basically the the, the wiring of your body that we regroup together, the wiring of your nervous system will not allow you to go into scary places without support because it's designed to keep okay. you alive. So I was okay. going, I was going into really scary ass places, finding my birth mom. That took like six months to nine months. Um, I happened right, to right, be, right. I happened to be going out east when I found her, and right. um, before I knew it, I was leaning into alcohol. I went I went from like you know a bottle of wine to like two oh. bottles of wine in isolation. Right. I, Wait, then you you just said before you knew it. So I mean, it was you were already drinking wine. It's just that what going into stepping into these dark places, nervous system not used to it. It's going like, so you started to adjust to trying to cope with the nervousness. I'm just I'm just uh, trying to understand. A hundred percent. And like, how many people? Okay. And how many people out there listening can really understand that? Right. Like. How yeah, it, right, it was right. a social thing, right? Like, you know, you went out and you had a few cocktails and then all of a sudden you realize like, oh, this really helps me level out. This really relaxes oh, me. This okay. really gives me right. this dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, little by little, you have to increase the amount of alcohol or drugs that you consume because your tolerance gets higher. And it actually doesn't give you that effect anymore. It doesn't give you that effect of calming your nerves. It actually makes you okay. more nervous because it's adding all that sugar and ethanol to your body. Okay, light bulb moment, because you gotta go slow for two reasons. One, I've never gone through it, and two, per se, never gone through it, that's who we're talking about. But two, I'm a guy. So yeah, <laughs> I just, so make sure I understood you. So, so I'm being honest, hey, some guys, some of my friends were guys. We were honest. Some guys they don't like to. They like to act like they always got it going on. It's not true at all. Okay, we're the, <laughs> we're, we're 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 so insecure. It's not even funny. But yeah, that's a whole other show. But anyhow, what I was gonna say is so, based upon what you just said, mm -hmm. the tolerance gets higher, so the chances to level out become less because the tolerance is getting. So you have to increase whatever it is that is helping you level out, so that you can quote unquote function or appear to function is kind of what you're saying. Yeah. No? Absolutely. Yeah. So, you okay. know, um, I've studied, I mean, I'm an addiction expert and, um, okay. and, you know, there's a lot of different philosophies about how this go, but one thing that we cannot deny is that where the biological chemical dependency happens with any substance, whether it be nicotine, sugar, you know, carbohydrates or heroin or alcohol, you know, at it's a, it's a, I just want to repeat that phrase. It's a biological, say it again. It becomes a biological chemical dependence, okay. right? So just Do, like you're I'm sorry, I got to write, I got to write that down. I'm listening to you, but I got to write that down. Totally. Go ahead. Um, you know, something that's, it, well, you're experiencing it this morning with the caffeine. <laughs> yes, that's what, no, that's what I was thinking of. But go ahead, no, seriously, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Let's, so, let's get into this, go ahead. Yeah, what you're experiencing with the caffeine is very similar. And Lisa's sharing, you know, it went from going to the bars and having yes. fun to then just being in her kitchen all the, alone, yeah. you know, with all these yeah. bottles. And what, what, right. we for, what we forget with some of these substances is that they are chemical depressants. Right. So they already have a central okay. nervous system depressant within them. So they are leveling us out because that's what makes us feel good and better. Right. And then mm -hmm. when you I became chemically dependent. So um, about three months after I met my birth mom, um, I woke up one day and I was just like literally shaking. And I was like, oh, wow, that's new. <laughs> that's like way worse. Right. Than a hang that's way worse than a hangover. And, <laughs> you know, when I, when I really came to the, con like the, the awareness that like, oh shit, this is real now. Um, right. I was scared and I was so ashamed, so ashamed, you know, I was like, oh my God, like, how did I let this get out of control? Well, I let this get out of control because I went trying to heal my trauma on my own <laughs> thing one right. and thing two, right. I had the idea that like, oh, that 
that would never happen to me, right? Like, I don't know, like that's what you see on TV or that's what you see on, you know, I lived in San Francisco at the time. Like you see that all the time in San Francisco, but it, it right. didn't have the cognizance that it could actually happen to me. And the, the methods of recovery <laughs> that were being um that were being basically uh, put in front of me all included um things that like i was absolutely willing to try and i did but they didn't truly truly resonate with me like i didn't feel okay. like oh my gosh this is my place this is exactly what i'm gonna do now because i'm a master at like i'll, I'll try anything once and i'll and i, and I also want to do well at everything that i try and everything you try, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm like, well, I'll go. I'll go. I, I can, I can relate. I can relate. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot yeah. of people out there can. No, yeah, I agree. I agree. I think a lot of people, whether they know it or not, right. they are like that. Yeah. Whether they're tentative or not, they actually most people. I agree. Yeah. Go ahead. Absolutely. Here's it. So what I um, realized is that um, I was faking it. I was like, oh yeah, this is totally gonna work. I'm really good at this. I can do the 12 steps. I can rock the 12 steps. I can be like the chair of all these meetings. I'll, I can rock it. Like (laughs) I can can look the part, but it wasn't really resonating with me. And I didn't feel like it was gonna give me that integrative experience where I could actually feel fulfilled in my life without these behaviors and without these substances. And I was like, I knew, I mean, I would tell the, the people that I was, that were supporting me at the time. I'm like, this is not going to last. Like, this is not yeah. a way of life right. for me. Right. And I right. know myself well enough that I'm calling it out and I'll continue. Yeah. And they're like, Oh, just relax. It's going to come to you. It's going to come to you. Well, at about every six months it wouldn't. And I would try to kill myself. You know, I was like, Oh my Got gosh, it. Got this it. is so uh, like nothing is really driving here. Like I'm pretending right, to right. be happy. There you go. And right. I would go back to the substance because I knew that was kind of the fastest way to disappear. And okay. I, so I want to so, pause there because I really feel like that's something okay. important for people to hear. You know what? Okay. Realistically, everything coming out of your mouth this morning is what everyone should <laughs> hear. That's so funny when you say that. I am so absorbed in what you're saying. Okay, go back and say what you're going to say because go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. There's something I want to ask, ask you. Well, I just want to, you know, what was underneath all of my coping mechanisms was a deep, deep, deep sense of fear of abandonment and shame. A deep sense of okay. fear of, of abandonment. Okay. Do me a favor. Please repeat that one more time for the guys. You got to remember now. Women, left and right brain going at the same time. Us guys, we're totally left brain. It takes us a while for stuff to absorb. So just, just do me a favor, because 60 to 65% of the people that watch any of my platforms are men. Yeah, yeah. They don't come on the show. They don't come on the show. They come to the show. They come to, they come to, no, 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 no. Okay, now, there you go, see, there you go. So, so. Hey, wait, that might be true, but what they DM me, with all seriousness, what they DM me, they need to hear. I'm telling you, my shows are all based upon my DMs. What you just said about the underlying aspect is what I'm getting DM'd, which is why I know who and what, excuse me, what to put on the show. Then I go look for who. And so what you're saying is very important to what I know I'm getting about the underlying stuff, please. Though it took me forever to hand it back to you. Please repeat what you just said, but as if you're talking to a toddler, which yeah. is what you got to well, talk to a man. I, I work with lots of men, so. I, I okay, so it. you know how to do it. So repeat yeah. that again, please, so yeah. that others can really grasp that. Yeah, so what I really want everyone to hear is that the substance, the behavior, is the coping mechanism. And yeah. in my particular case, what was underneath the coping mechanism was a deep, deep, deep sense of no one's going to love me. I'm going to be abandoned. I'm not lovable the way I am. This is going to repeat over and over in my life. And on top of that was a deep level of shame. I am bad because I couldn't handle my drinking. I am bad because I think I'm unlovable. I am bad because I have a lot of proof that I am unlovable. I am bad because I exist. Right. And with this deep level of abandonment and shame on top of that, 
it is so difficult mm-hmm. to for anyone to recover. Right. Because right. it becomes layered, ultimately. layered and layered on top is what you're saying. It's kind of well, hard to break free from it, or what? Well, well, ultimately, what what happens is if this, if I'm afraid that I'm going to be left and no one loves me, and I think I'm a piece of shit simultaneously, yeah. right? You know I have virgin ears, right? You know I have virgin ears. But go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. And I think I'm a piece of poop. Um, then, <laughs> okay. Then there's no way that um, when things get hard, that my nervous system isn't going to direct me to my favorite coping mechanism. Okay, okay. so I want to put that like in the simplest way to, to be. After you've been do, if you've been coping with sugar, caffeine, nicotine, any kind of behavior that you've done over and over and over again, the nervous mm-hmm. system is designed to take the path of least resistance. The path okay. of least resistance. So, in the in the recovery spaces, we call it triggers. I call it activation. Right. So, if you're having a a, a really terrible day, your partner just really like yelled at you that morning. You don't know what to do and you're, you're, you're stopping drinking. You're stopping using sugar. You're stopping using Mm -hmm. caffeine. You're stopping behaving in these ways, right? You get activated, Mm -hmm. you get triggered. And the whole day, just one thing after another goes wrong by the end Mm -hmm. of the day, probably halfway through the day, your wiring in your brain is going to tell you, go have a drink, go eat some sugar, Mm -hmm. go watch porn, go, you know, smoke a cigarette. Go do something. Mm-hmm. And it's going to tell you over and over and over again. And path of least resistance is going to tell you that path. Yep. Because that's what it knows to do to, to soothe you. Right? To right. cope Got it. with it. To bring, the, to bring you down. It. To be like, it's okay that my partner and I are in a fight today. Right? But if you don't, right. if, if at the end of the day, you feel like I'm going to be abandoned so I can't go have a conversation with my partner. And I'm unlovable the way I am. So who am I to do that? And I'm just, I'm, I'm garbage. Like, there's no reason for me to right. do that. You're not going to be able mm-hmm. to think clearly. You're not going to be able to really access the parts of your brain to go make good choices. Like, let me go for a run. Let me go- call right. a buddy. Let me, you know, do all of these things that could be good for me. And instead, beneficial, gonna... beneficial ways to soothe, in other words. Beneficial high ways to level soothe. Coping. Oh, we call it okay, high, high level coping. No, nope, yeah. no, nope, high level coping. I did. I know. I, I read that as I was looking at some of your yeah. stuff. So, so other ways to have high level coping. I hope I'm saying it right, the, the right way. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to make sure. I re, I repeat stuff for me and for guys. I'm, so I tell my guests that all the time. I don't think I told you that in the pre-show when we did the pre-show. But yeah. if I'm repeating, it's not just because I'm an idiot. No, I'm not. I'm not an idiot. But I'm not because I'm grasping it. But I know. I know men. And that's, that's what the men tell me. You know, we like your guests, but sometimes can you just repeat what they say? So I'll repeat it. And then I direct them to you, to your, to your page. But the high level coping is something that can take place because the nervous system can be trained to go in that path instead of the addictive path or the least resistant path. The least resistant, no? let's say. Yeah, let's say the least resistant because quite frankly, anything can be quote unquote addictive. And I don't- Well, you're running, running, yeah. running could yeah. become that, yeah. you know, so, so get, The yeah. way that we talk about it in the trauma world is it's either adaptive or maladaptive, right? Got so it. Okay. adaptive means like, oh, okay, running can be great, but if you're running with, you know, a broken toe and shin splints, <laughs> which, <laughs> yeah. Many, yeah, right. which it, many people do, you know, like it's true. Like, no, I get happens. I get what you're saying. So, yeah, no, that then happens. That yeah. becomes a maladaptive coping mechanism. And what are you running from? Well, that person right, is right. usually running from a feeling of unlovability and shame, right? right, right? right so it all comes right. back to that root cause. And everything that, that could... I do is based in the root cause. So, you Got know, it. if I'm supporting someone, and they're like, oh, I'm such an addict. I'm like, oh, actually, we're not going to talk about you like that anymore. Right? Because <laughs> oh, good. Cool. you actually created that pattern, right, to cope in that way because of something that happened to you when you were just a little kid. And I promise you that that little kid did not ask for the things that happened to you. And you found a way to survive and not to thrive. Right? right. And so if we can go back and we can heal 
and really look at and accept what happened at that root cause level, those original incidents that happened, those things that really hurt, that emotional trauma that happened, then that's where we can really start to support people and myself and people here that are watching us now, right? To get to those higher levels of freedom in their body, mind, spirit of being like, oh, wow, now that I know Maybe I don't believe it 100% yet that I'm lovable, but I know I'm on the path of regrooving my mind, my body, my spirit, and integrating at that full level to know that like, this is possible. This is possible. And creating that hope and that possibility is so important to any recovery process, whether you're diagnosed with a chronic illness, cancer, or anything. Like the people that survive are people Mm -hmm. that are really in supportive networks, right? Support, 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 where they can really start to reframe and regroove all of these old belief systems. And I take it to that next level because I don't believe that a belief system can be changed here. It has to be changed here 